Yo, what's good? It's Mastermind MMA, and this video is going to be on the confrontation between Pauli Malinaji and Conor McGregor that they had yesterday at a scrum. Um, first off, I'm going to give you my take on Pauli. Uh, honestly, to be honest, I like Pauli a lot. Uh, <laughs> Pauli's from Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. Um, you know, he, he's he's a classic Brooklyn guy, and... You know, he, he, he's, he's just a real dude, you know what I mean? He's a stand-up boxer. Um, to be honest, he can't crack an egg like, with his punches, but he has good movement, his angles, his footwork. Kind of like Floyd Mayweather, in a sense. So, you know, he, he, he's, he's, a, he's a world-class fighter, and I rock with him, and he's funny, too. He, he, he's kind of a character in, in himself, and he's funny, and if you guys don't know, I want to show you a clip, or, or let you hear a clip of Pauly, alright, so I'll set up the situation for you, it's just mad funny, so Adrian Broner, if you guys don't know Adrian Broner, he's a boxer, and he, he's, he was friends with Floyd Mayweather, they're running together, they're calling Adrian Broner the next Floyd Mayweather, um, he, he's lost since, but at this time he was undefeated. He was young, like 23 or 24. And he was, he was at the whole pre fight press conference. He was saying, yeah, um, I want to thank Jessica. And he, he actually started dating a girl Paul used to mess with. And then Polly, Polly was like, oh, you know, she was just one of many girls. Like, she was a side piece. She wasn't even, like, my main chick. She was a side piece. And Broner kept talking about her, the whole fight buildup. And Broner was actually, um, he, he was talking shit to him about, like, stealing his girl during the fight and stuff. And Broner ended up winning that fight, I think, by a decision. And, and here's what he says fights and all the news conferences negative i'm good i beat polly i left with his belt and his girl adrian congratulations on winning the title polly come on in hey i'm just saying you lost i know i know i lost but, but don't, hold on hold on hold on, hold on, hold on wait, wait, don't brag about taking my side piece don't brag about taking my side piece though that's my side piece you don't get laid hey, <laughs> <laughs> so so that was Adrian Broner is like I, I I I took his girl and his belt and all that and then and then and then Paulie walks over and he was like and then Adrian's like come on man you lost the fight he's like yeah I know but don't don't brag about taking my side piece bro don't brag about taking my side piece bro you don't get laid and shit like that that shit was hilarious and and man, Polly Polly calls it how he is. He lost uh, a decision to uh, to Diaz, I believe, and just in the ring, he's like, you know, boxing is just full of shit. This is bias. I I beat a guy in his hometown and I lose the decision. This is bullshit. Yada yada. And he goes on. He just calls it how it is. So he's always been that kind of guy. If you don't know him, he always says like the controversial shit. He speaks his mind regardless. So when when he sees when he sees he's at the scrum and he talks to uh Connor's manager Audi Attar who's also Tony Tony Ferguson's manager and then the way Audi was talking to to Polly you it, he just showed his character Audi looks like a motherfucking scumbag dude because the way he, he was just so sly saying you talked yourself out of your contract Polly you talked yourself out of your contract, Polly. So what Polly went up to him and said is like, "Oh, that was a low, you know, that was a low blow what you did to him, did to me." And then this guy Audi is Audi or whatever is thinking that, "Oh, because because he didn't get paid, he's like, oh, you talked yourself out of your contract, Polly," and he just kept saying that. And then and then it was getting heated. And then Connor comes over and he's like, oh, what's the problem, man? What's the problem? And he's like touching him on, on the shoulder, trying to be all nice, looking all concerned. And he's like, what's the problem? And he's like, you got your ass kicked. Get over it. Get over it. And started getting like in his face and shit. And Paul, he's like, where's your balls, Connor? <laughs> Remember what I asked you in the gym? Where's your balls, Connor? 
Where's your balls? <coughs> and that's what he that's what he kept yelling. I thought the shit was so funny. And yeah, Polly, I think that's really Polly just posturing for a fight after this cuz if Connor has a decent enough show and they could that's that's your next bout right there. And Polly has a big enough name in the boxing world and a prestigious and enough name in the boxing world that that'd be that dude 2.2 million buys easy. Fucking um Canelo Chavez Jr did 2.2 million buys. So I'm sure I'm sure a McGregor Malinaji would do that. And he's a skilled enough boxer and in the boxing ring, Polly, I wouldn't I wouldn't, you know, I, I don't believe that Connor would whip Polly's ass. So that'd be a good fight. I'd want to see that. But that that was just funny. Where's your balls, Connor? I was cracking up for that shit. But yeah, Polly's a funny ass guy, man. He he keeps it real. He talks like he's on like he's just like yacked up all day. Funny as fuck, man. He's the man. Uh, yeah. So that's a possible po- uh a next fight for Connor. Depend. Everything just pl- depends on how Saturday plays out. So yeah, man. Those are oh, and then now I want to talk about the press conference. So the press conference was business, as I expected. You know, um, the way, the way Floyd really took the. He he took the the kind of the boss route in the press conference because he showed he's calm, cool, collected. And he's he's the forty nine and own guy. He doesn't have to prove anything. He's just gonna go out and does what he does. Connor was doing um kind of trying to like laid back, but like still talking that shit. And we'll see, man. You know, uh, not too much mind games being played except for the posturing with uh, people showing up late. But that was, that was what it was, man. Oh, and the WBC money belt being unveiled. I just thought that was so fucking boss, man. I just thought it was so boss. The way they had the, the money belt. Because WBC... Such a prestigious organization, and um, you know, for them to come up with the with their own WBC belt, especially because Floyd is like a, a, a five division world champion, and he's unified all the belt. He's like undisputed, and you know, Connor's got two UFC straps in two different weight classes that he's bringing. So that's a lot of championship caliber. Um, talent being brought to the table, so a belt needs to be put on the line. So the fact that they put a belt up that's so dope, that looks cool, is so fucking sick. So I'm pumped on that. And uh, if you guys don't know, I did. I have the the money belt shirt, which is designed by me. Link in the description. Uh, yeah, because. You guys could see it in the in the description in that video, and it just looks so badass the way they have the alligator and and the the strap is like so much longer on the right they said because they want to preserve the alligator hide and just like just somehow so baller that thing is like dude if if McGregor adds that to his case, he's got the the cage warriors belt belts. The UFC belt and the WBC money belt. Just like that'd be boss as shit. Floyd gets it, that's like the cherry cherry on top. But if Connor gets it, that's like, dude, you took out the king and you you have the crown now. That's literally the the money belt is the crown to boxing in the combat sports world. So if he pulls that off, that shit would be amazing. And um yeah, man. Those are my thoughts on it. Uh, I have, I have the the money shirt. I have my next videos where I'll be announcing all my brand new prints that I did today that are going to be out and available. So yeah, catch them in the next videos to come. And I appreciate you guys. You already know it's Mastermind MMA.